Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I'm continuing with the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, which speaks of the end times, the days that we're in right now. And with my own um, thoughts about it, uh, which may help or in some cases. And so if you, if you like them, please, please consider them. But if you don't like them, I hope you won't take offense. So we're now up to verse 11. And, it, and I'm going to take the next couple of verses one by one because they speak about diverse topics, as they say in the Bible. Verse 11, And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. All right. These are the end times, but they're the beginning of the new times, right? But the end always brings um, concerns and upsets and fears for safety because it's the end of something. Right? I've spoken before of our body cells, which are very conservative little beings. We have plenty of them, and they create quite a bit of anxiety in times of change. So, so what happens when we feel upset and anxious and fearful and we're, we don't know where to turn is we turn to other people to help us, right? And um, what, we're, what we have right now I mean, I've spoken before of the false ascension matrix. This is Lisa Renee's notion. Um, what we have is, especially men who are used to leading, uh, they're used to being the leaders of society right now, they're trying to think with their left brains what to do about all this. They know that change is happening. They know that their families and their groups and those people that they look out for are upset about things and with their left brain they're constructing mental filters to carry their groups through the ascension process, right? But but the thing is the left brain is not capable of that. It's not capable of it it proceeds it's like geometry. The left brain proceeds from a set of principles that are posited and it, it creates a construct based on that, right? Um, if, the, if somebody hadn't come up with those principles through intuition in the first place, there would be no geometry, right? And so the left brain comes up with a bunch of principles and then creates a construct and then the, the leader informs the people about this construct. And these constructs keep changing over and over again because the change is happening, right? Nothing fits, really. And so that's maybe what they mean by false prophets, is that these are, are people who mean very well, but they're creating false ascension matrices because, um, because they're working through their left brain or, or through their third eye point, divorced from their hearts. So eventually it's all going to settle down and settle into the, the center of our being, our heart chakras. And remember, our heart chakras are not just there in the, in, where the heart is. There's a low heart just around the diaphragm. There's a, um, a high heart located at the thymus. And so there's the low, the middle, and the high heart. And these create a very dynamic engine for... for um, seeing us through these changes and and those leaders who who turn to their heart energy the energy of Christ consciousness will in fact uh, switch from from the false things that they've been trying to help people with to a truer version of how they can become um, the prophets of this age that was a long sentence <laughs> a long verse there verse 11 and uh, I think there's time for another verse, or maybe two. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. All right. So, so we've spoken of this in a, in a prior video. Um, what we have is massive soul wounding. Uh, I prefer soul wounding myself as an explanation for what is going on. It's called in iniquity in the Bible, meaning uh, evil, evil actions. And, and these are described elsewhere in the Bible very, very definitely. So I was looking around for a definition of iniquity. And um, I, I looked to the chapter before, chapter 23, uh, verse 
37. And I like this verse because it describes the iniquity in, in terms that are not like the usual list of like adultery and other, like the Ten Commandments, failing to honor your parents and all that, you know. We know about that list of iniquity, but here's a new definition. In verse 37 of chapter 23 of Matthew, um, I, I like it because Christ is speaking from his heart here, and he's describing something that we can aspire to. He says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Okay, so, so Christ is saying, he, this is very good. Christ is saying that out of our concern for our social position, like the um, Sanhedrin did to him, the, the religion of, of Judea at the time was killing the prophets killing the prophets, the true prophets, and stoning them, the people that were sent to uplift all humanity. And then he said how he would behave. He would gather, he would gather the children that they uh, socially ostracized. He would, like a mother hen gathering her chickens together, he would, he would gather all humankind. He would not think about whether whether people were worth it or pe whether people were not worth it, but, but like a mother, he would shelter and protect all everyone. So th this is a difference between iniquity, I think, and uh, and Christ consciousness is whether we feel our hearts towards all humankind, or whether we act within the strict and stringent limits of societal boundaries. So. To read the verse again, verse 12 in chapter 24 of Matthew, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. All right. So let's, let's just think about social strictures there, and let's think about how, how we can loosen those social strictures and those group affinities and those national affiliations, and uh, how, how we can stop warring and, and just... Feel love. Feel love. You don't have to feel love for anything. Just feel love. Feel appreciation. I feel. And, and in that way, even though soul wounding is everywhere in this dimension, w the love of our, our own hearts will not wax cold. <laughs> All right, we're on Matthew chapter 24. And now I'm at verses uh, 13 and 14, and these speak of faith, I feel. It goes like this. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Okay, so in the prior verses of this uh, chapter, Christ has spoken of all of the things that we have to overcome. He's spoken of the wars and the rumors of war, and he's spoken of the beginning of sorrows, and then he's spoken of, uh, of the prophets being persecuted and killed, and, and the false prophets that we need to come to terms with and how love will die because iniquity abounds, right? And, um, and then he says, But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So we have to have faith. We have to have endurance. We have to have fortitude. We have to know that, if, that we can get through this. Each of us, every human being, can get through this process. And the gospel shall be preached in all the world the gospel, the good news, okay? The news that, that, that love is very important. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love God first, you know? Whom, and when we establish this whom, in our own hearts, we will be home free, don't you think? 
And then shall the end come. The end of what? The end of the sorrows. Okay. The sorrows that we've been experiencing for all these many lifetimes in this dimension. Okay. And a new kingdom will be there. The kingdom of love, the kingdom of Christ consciousness. So faith, faith. And we'll go on with this chapter in a little while. <laughs>